Hello everyone, my name is Garrett Stevenson and welcome to History News. Today I'll be interviewing Marquess de Lafayette. Marquess was a French aristocrat and military officer who fought for the United States in the American Revolutionary War. Here is a video of the interview. Hi Marquess, how are you today? Very good, very good. Now, let's get the interview running. Yes. Okay, now to the first question. Marquess, how was your childhood? My childhood growing up was quite normal, but a little bit sad. In September 6, 1757, I was born into quite a rich family at the Chateau de, de Chavannic Hospital in Aubergine, France. I lived quite a normal life, and then until my father was killed in battle during a battle in England. Then in 1770, both my mother and my grandmother died, leaving me a very, very, very wealthy orphan. And then in 1771, when I was 14, I started training to become an officer at the Musketeer of Military Household, King of France. 14 seems really young to join the army. Now, I heard that you got married quite young. Who did you marry and why so early? I got married at the age of 16 which was actually quite late to get married in my time. I got married to Adriana Francois de Noailles, which allied me with one of the wealthiest families in France. This is because Mary was related to the king. The reason I married so early was because it wasn't seen as early in my time. In my time, by the time I was 14, I was already classified as a man. A man at 14. Well, now I hear that you're convinced to join the army by a relative of King George III. Is this so, and what did he say to convince you? This is actually quite true. In August 1775, I attended a dinner party at which the Great Britain's Duke of Glossier, my young, younger brother of King George III, was the guest of honour. But he began speaking to me about the conflict between the British and the colonists. I blamed the English for killing my father, so I decided to join the Americans to strike back at England and get revenge. So, when you decided to join the army, how did you do so? When I decided to join the army, I met Celestine. He was chosen by the Continental Congress to recruit foreign soldiers. So when I had a chat to him, he told me that sadly, I wouldn't be able to fight the Americans. So I declared and told Cyrus that I would serve for free and pay for all of my expenses. Cyrus was so shocked by this that he instantly made me Major General in the Patriot Army. Truly remarkable. Marquess, were you liked and respected by the people in the revolution, or were you hated and disliked? I was loved by the people in the revolution. The people had a nickname for me, the hero of both worlds. This is as in 1778, Great Britain declared war on France, so I ended up fighting for both the colonists and my homeland, becoming a hero in both armies. Well, both sides of the war liked you. Now, I heard that you were in quite a good relationship with George Washington. Uh, how did you meet him? It is true. I was quite good friends with George. I first met him when I was given the position of general in the Patriot Army. I fought many battles with George, which strengthened our friendship. We became such close friends that I actually named my only son, George, after George, naming him George Washington Lafayette. You must have been great friends with him to name your only son after him. Now. Before you became a big war hero, what was your first experience of battle like? My first experience of battle was the Battle of Brandywine near Philadelphia on September 11th, 1777. In this battle, I was shot in the calf by one of the European soldiers. It was a great loss. In that battle, more than 1,300 men were killed, injured or captured. After the battle, through my injury and my defeat, I gained quite a great deal of respect from my troops. That's quite crazy for your first battle. Now I heard that you had something to do with the Declaration of Rights and Men of the Citizen. Is this so? It's true. I did. I actually co-authored, with the help of Jefferson, the Declaration of Independence Principal Architect. The National Assembly adopted the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen on August 27, 1789. And it remains en enshrined in France's present-day constitution. You must have been very important to the French to let you co-author their Declaration of Rights. I hear you are still a revolutionary leader at age 72. In 1830, I took over and took care of the National Guard 
and rushed to the aid of revolutionaries who put the barricades up in the streets of Paris. After the king was made to quit, I was offered a chance to rule as dictator, and instead of taking that chance, I backed the installation of Louis Philippe Philippe on the throne as constitutional monarch. The new king quickly disappointed me with his lack of modifications, and then I led the liberal opposition to the ruler in my last years. Still a leader at 72. At 72, I hope to be retired and relaxing, not ruling a country. Now, when you died, was it a good death or a bad death? And how do people react? After I died at 76 years old in Paris on May 20th, 1834, I was laid to rest to, next to my wife at the city cemetery to carry out my request the hero of two worlds, to be buried in both American and French soil. My son, George, covered my coffin with the dirt my family had taken from Bunker Hill in 1825 when I laid the cornerstone to the monument that still marks the battlefield. Okay, it seems that's all we've got time for today, and thanks for coming today, Marquis. Okay, thanks for having me today. Good night, everybody, and thanks for watching History News. Thank you.